home townships, uh, what we're really in business is snow plowing, lighting fires, some of us have cemeteries. And so broadband is kind of a new area for us. We've been really, I think, having some real success. So what got us started two years ago was we saw the uh, stimulus projects being developed all around us. And this is St. Louis County, and the blue shows where our townships are. Um, Duluth is right there at the end of Lake Superior. Um, we had the Lake County Fiber Project going in. Uh, Cook County was developing something. There's a Northeast Services Co-op uh, was building uh, Middle Isle. And um, we're, what about us? Because we don't have anything. In my township, it's um, dial-up and satellite. And um, so uh, we got a bunch of uh, citizens together to try to look into this, and it's been quite a journey. And just to show you how all these projects are going around us, um, this is the current map for Lake County Broadband, and the gray are our townships, um, and their middle mile is going right through us and all around us and being ringed by it, but the stimulus project, of course, didn't include us. Um, here's the latest um, Connect Minnesota map for northeastern Minnesota. And the light blue are underserved communities. And you all know how underserved our rural areas are. The circle there shows where our townships are. Um, I envy people who, uh, who are in counties that are pursuing broadband uh, because I think collectively you have an advantage of both uh, population and also the infrastructure that county government brings. But townships, um, mainly volunteer supervisors. I'm one of three in our township. We don't have any accountants, we don't have attorneys, we don't have much of anything to work with. And um, of course, St. Louis County, being the largest county in Minnesota, and having um, the large population centers in Duluth and the Range Cities, really, understandably, are not interested in building anything or owning anything. So we kind of felt like we are on our own. And that's really why we got involved. So the story is that um, three townships got together and we created a little ad hoc committee to develop a strategy. Um, the Blandon Foundation, thank you very much, provided a lot of consulting support. And uh, it was totally invaluable to try to get us on um, the track. Um, in addition, I would say that some of the providers have also given us a tremendous amount of experience. Uh, Dominic Henderson, the Lake County team, we met with CenturyLink, we met with Frontier, met with our club light power, we met, and they were all very free with their advice. And that is, it's going to be expensive, it's going to take time, it's going to take a lot of energy. So uh, we developed some outreach and education materials to our citizens because so many of them were on the uh, dialogue. They didn't really know what they could do. Why do I need this? And we distributed it by um, Lake Association meetings, picnics, mailings, email, newsletter, however we could. And then this citizen group, and I should say that in rural townships, there's a lot of talent. Um, many people think we're all retirees or lake owners, but we have lawyers and accountants and businessmen and uh, people with a lot of experience. So we developed a questionnaire to figure out uh, what the satisfaction level was and whether people would pay for their property. And again, Blandon um, consultants helped us put together an online tool that was very effective. We did have to do some mailings because many people were not online. But um, in the end, we collected, um, and then we were joined by uh, four other townships around us who uh, came in with this. And in the end, we collected over 500 households and seized residents and seasonals and got some great information. And the most common source of internet that was being used, of course, was satellite, and then cell phone, DSL, and dial-up. And almost 20% of our residents were using dial-up. It's amazing. Um, most of the people rated their service only fair and poor, and 11% um, didn't use the internet at all. 95% um, were somewhat likely or very likely to pay for high-speed broadband. And the needs included from our survey, online education, we have university professors, we have teachers, we have students, telecommuting was a big one, running small businesses, healthcare, uh, communication like Skype, social media, and of course then uh, movies and so on. And the townships all need emergency training for fire halls, we need business transactions and communication needs. 
Um, this was a screenshot from uh, the results of our survey. As you can see at the top, most people rated the, their own services fair and poor. Down at the bottom, this was the residents' response. We had a separate question for seasonals, and 83% said they pay. Now, 45 a month is a little low. In hindsight, I'd probably do it again with more like 70 to 100. But a lot of people said that they would um, pay a lot for better broadband. So that was really encouraging to us because we knew we were onto something. So we set ourselves a goal of Minnesota broadband that's 10 megabits down and six that's up or better. Um, we have continued uh, communication with our citizens through an e-newsletter. We have a Facebook page, website, which uh, again the Brandon Foundation helped develop for us. And uh, we also um, post some news occasionally to the Blandon blog, which by the way is a phenomenal resource. I'm sure you're all looking at it. I look at it every day, every day, because there's new information there. Um, so we're doing our own continuing education by going to conferences and attending webinars and helping to um, try to educate ourselves on what's going on in Minnesota and nationally. These uh, seven townships ultimately developed a joint powers agreement create, creating the Cloquet Valley Internet Initiative Steering Committee so that we could um, formally uh, work on these things. Uh, each township threw in a few hundred dollars, and I think our new organization demonstrates a more coordinated effort and a bigger commitment to the market. And we did some other homework. Um, and this is all grassroots, okay? So the county assessor's office shared with us all the real estate information that's already publicly online, and we have friends at the university that turned it into a map, and it kind of shows where our residents are, and it's not random. They're along the roads. So somebody that wants to come in with broadband would see that all you have to do is go up the roads and you're going to meet a lot of people there. We did um, some census information and um, the numbers of households, as you can see in these rural townships, is very, very low. This is very typical of many of our rural townships in Minnesota. Um, North Star Mine has 99 households, whole township. Um, but collectively, we represent almost 1,500 um, households, and those are residents' households. And then there are a lot of seasonals, too. There's almost 700 seasonals. So there's a market, there's a market here if you work together. Um, Connected Nation helped us out a little bit by looking at the population demographics. This is the age demographic, and what we found is that really um, our population is made of working class, working age people are doing businesses, telework, health care, they have kids in school, um, there's a need here based on the uh, age demographic. So, um, so we, we then went after some feasibility studies and got uh, grants from the AgStar um, and we went after a feasibility study for the Blandon Foundation again. Um, our county, while they don't want to build anything, uh, offered us a loan to match the uh, Blandon funds. And uh, we solicited two proposals and funded two proposals to help us understand the realities of um, the providers and the costs in our area. The first one was conducted by Eureka Broadband Ventures, and I know Joanne Johnson is in the office. They're, they're awesome. Uh, and they did a comparison of all the opportunities and the pros and cons across the potential providers in our area. And then we also decided to spring for a uh, study of fiber to the home, uh, fiber to the node, the DSL, because we knew those were going to be the most expensive and technical uh, solutions. And Compass Consulting out of, um, out of Central Minnesota conducted that work, and it was really terrific. Um, here's the results. For uh, the general feasibility study, in the near term, it looks like wireless options are probably the most, most probable, um, and perhaps improve DSL through some of the Connect America fund, um, funding. And in the longer term, of course, fiber optic from Lake County, or perhaps Paul Bunyan was in the general region. There might be others. And they gave us some pros and cons of these different options, and many of you know them. So mobile wireless has um, pretty good bandwidth, um, but it 
it's somewhat expensive and it has data plans that can get expensive if you watch movies or do uh, technical things. Fixed wireless also uh, is very good um, bandwidth. Can be affected by weather and topography, but no data plan is a good thing. Satellites are getting a lot better, and I personally have the Exceed satellite in my house. It's pretty inexpensive to install. Um, there's some latency on the uploads, and the data plans can get pretty pricey if you are really data bomb. Um, DSL is somewhat expensive to upgrade. Um, also, medium bandwidth, no data plans. Fiber optic is extremely expensive to deploy, very, very fast, um, no data plans. So we really got some pros and cons there. From the engineering analysis, um, we found out, as, as we were told earlier, that fiber is expensive. So for the seven organized and two unorganized townships in our area with a moderate tape rate, uh, $4.5 million for fiber to the known DSL, 11.8 for fiber to the home. Well, those are big numbers. Um, what we learned from that is going to realize anything like that, partnerships are absolutely essential. And the study also gave us some business model ideas, although uh, for townships these are still um, somewhat intimidating. For instance, the um, FCC Connect America Fund is still going on. Perhaps the USDA will be continuing some of its loans, uh, commercial bank loans, bonds, and subscriptions. And so you know, this was really a reality check for us and said, well, maybe we need to take an incremental approach. So what are we doing? Um, we continue to lobby the providers, educate ourselves, and communi communicate with our communities. We're maintaining that goal of 10 down and 6 up or better. Um, we're trying to stay engaged, and that's why I'm here. Um, we attended one of Senator Smith's listening sessions. Um, we also started to get Minnesota Association of Townships and Newsletter that just came out. We have an article in it about how Minnesota rural townships are falling behind. And uh, we continue to go to the conferences and make as many friends as we can. We have some really good news. Our uh, cooperative light power electric co op has uh, finally gotten interested, and they were part of our original feasibility study. And they're deploying um, towers in our area. And uh, they're trying to use some new technology that gives us up to seven down and one and a half up. Um, we have the townships have been working with the electric co-op to advertise and uh, establish minimum subscriptions so they can be convinced that this is a good thing to do. This is a picture of um, our Normana Tower that um, is actually located on one of our supervisors' property. Kim Grubb, who's in the audience, thank you very much. This is a field trip we took to see our new tower. And um, so that's really providing a good incremental improvement that's going to show people what faster broadband can do. And it is being ex adopted as quickly as it can be deployed. So um, what have we learned? So the challenges, of course, for rural township, and I don't need to tell you about this, is trying to demonstrate a market for return on investment. And the low population density that's out there in the townships um, and the home-based businesses is fairly low in return on investment. Um, townships, if we're going in alone, have limited administrative capability, as most of us are part of um, Kind of limited on capacity for fundraising. Everybody wants to keep this tax levy as low as we can. <coughs> There's very limited infrastructure in place in many places. And uh, in our area, we have the peaks and pines, we have a, a rolling uh, glacial landscape with a lot of conifers, and it's uh, hard to get signals across. But there are opportunities in these rural areas, as you've heard this morning already. Community connectedness and that neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor mm -hmm. communication can be essential. I want to say the townships can really do a lot of communication. <coughs> we all have a kind of new spirit. Rural residents have a lot of skills that can be deployed, and you know, you've all set up task forces and wonderful things, and you know that that's a good thing. Uh, we do have a little less bureaucracy we can get stuff done, and we're not shy about asking for help. <coughs> There's uh, 
we're building on that grassroots frustration that can lead to some action. We can create formal and informal partnerships. And overall, um, there's a huge pressure to meet Minnesota's border to border goals by the end of the year. Um, so with that, I have a lot of thanks to um, a lot of groups. <coughs> um, Connect Minnesota, Landon Foundation, I should say Eureka Broadband Ventures, we really appreciate your ongoing interest, our town boards, and our electric club. So I'll be around the rest of the day to answer questions. I know you're trying to move things along, but thank you so much.